You're going to start on the upper right and move all the way across the arch to the upper left. Then you'll jump to the lower left and then go all the way across the cart, the arch to the lower right side. So, um, essentially you're going to start on the upper right and end on the lower right. So starting up here, you're going to have your one, two, three, four, five, six is a canine. Then you get um, up to these incisor teeth up here. So you have seven, eight, and nine. Eight and nine, I like to refer to as your Hollywood teeth. Those are right at the midline. And those are the ones that people see the most. Um, and then you'll go over um, 10, 11 is the other canine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is a wisdom tooth. And I'll go over like specifically the wisdom teeth numbering. So then we'll jump down to 17 wisdom tooth, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 canine, and then 23, 24, 25. So again, we're at the midline again. So I like to say Christmas and Christmas Eve, 24 and 25 are your midline teeth on the lowers. Um, and then you'll follow the numbering system all the way to this back tooth, um, which is number 32, which is the final wisdom tooth. So your wisdom tooth numbers are one, 16, 17, and 32. When you start at the midline and then you start going back, here you have your central incisors and those are going to be single rooted. Um, then the next teeth um, towards the back, those are your lateral incisors, again, single rooted, and then your canines and single rooted. So basically all of the anterior teeth in the mouth are going to be single rooted teeth. Once you get um, towards the back teeth, um, that's when you get to the bicuspid, which is the first bicuspid, that one usually has two roots and then you get to your second bicuspid and that one has a single root. Then your last three molars, your biggest teeth are typically um, three roots or tri-rooted, um, but everyone's different and people can have different roots and everything. So um, that's just kind of your typical, um, what each one is going to have. When you're looking at at two surfaces, you want to kind of base everything off of the midline, which is that center line that goes right down the middle of your face um, and separates eight and nine in Christmas and Christmas Eve 24, 25. So um, when you're towards the midline, you are going to be at a mesial surface. So think mesial midline, you're going to be towards the midline. So looking at this tooth right here, um, which is number 30, if we're looking at this surface right here, that's towards the midline, that's gonna be your mesial surface because it's towards this way. Now, when you're thinking of distal, you're gonna think distant to the midline, um, which is going to be the opposite side. So the same tooth number 30, right here, this surface that touches this tooth right here, that's gonna be your distal surface. When you're talking about kind of like what goes up against the cheeks and the lips, that's gonna be this surface right here and that's your buckle surface. And buckle in anatomical terms or scientific terms means cheek. So if you can remember um, buckle means cheek, you're gonna know that's the cheek side all the way through. If you wanna get technical, the um, anterior teeth, so canines forward, um, those can be considered labial, but the two terms are kind of used interchangeably. You can also call this a buckle surface, but since it's more touching the lips themselves, you can also call it a labial surface. When you're looking on the inside, the surfaces that actually touch the teeth, those are going to be your lingual surfaces. And I like to think um, lingual as language and you use your tongue to speak your language. So any surfaces that are touching um, the tongue, those are going to be your lingual surfaces here. Then we'll jump to occlusal surfaces. So the anterior teeth, um, they, they're called something different than occlusal. Those are gonna be your incisals. So incisal surfaces are the top parts of these um, lower or upper anterior teeth. And those are the ones that patients usually chip most often because they're the thinnest surfaces. But when you get to the posterior teeth, so um, premolars back, that's when you get to your occlusal surfaces. And, and I actually just thought of this. Um, you can think of occlusal as like a O, like a big O on the big molars, um, because you can kind of trace that around that whole entire occlusal surface. And then I and sizal are those short little, they look like little eyes on the top because they're just straight lines usually across the tops of those surfaces. Occlusal surfaces are kind of special because they're kind of your access, your doctor's access to 
um, the mesial and distal surfaces of a tooth. So in order for your doctor to access this area, you can't get directly to that area and get a predictable filling in there um, by going through the side. You have to go through the top part of the tooth, which is the occlusal. So if your doctor tells you your patient has mesial decay on number 30, you know to treatment plan a mesial occlusal filling because your doctor is going to have to go through that occlusal surface to access that mesial surface where the cavity is. Um, so think of the occlusal as kind of like the access gateway point to those um, interproximal surfaces, the mesial and the distal. Interproximal just means in between the teeth. So um, you have your proximal surfaces, which are the surfaces that touch each other, um, teeth to or tooth to tooth. So interproximal is just that space in between the two proximal surfaces of two teeth touching. Class five just means at the gum line. You can have just a single buckle filling um, and that can be in this little groove. A lot of patients will have these grooves that come way down and then they can get um, little pits right here that catch cavities. That would just be um, a buckle surface filling. But if it's along this gum line because of recession or whatever it is, that's a class five. So anything that kind of touches that gum line is gonna be a class five filling. Recession is just the pulling away of the gum tissues from the body of the tooth and exposing the root surface. So um, like it, it just happens over time usually and sometimes there's a cause, sometimes there's not. Um, but that gum will just kind of push downward or push upward depending on where you're at um, and expose that root surface. And that root surface is a lot darker than the enamel of the tooth. So um, you'll know that it's recession because that'll that exposure of the root surface will be showing. And sometimes patients can have sensitivity with that. Um, and then you can catch cavities easier there because it's not protected by the enamel. Um, but that's, that's kind of recession, is just that pulling away of the gum tissue from the body of the tooth. So just a little recap, wisdom teeth, you have one, 16, 17, and 32 going across the mouth. And then your central incisors on the top, those are eight and nine Hollywood teeth. And then your central incisors on the bottom are your Christmas and Christmas Eve, 24 and 25.